celebration of God's goodness standing together in faith. Be constantly, he said, engaging in the contest of faith. Your faith ought to be on something all the time. Now is the time for purpose and destiny to meet in the unfolding of God's vision for the earth. You are the number one candidate in the earth today that all of heaven is waiting for. Your hosts, Drs. Andre and Jenny Raybert. Hallelujah, everybody, welcome. Wherever you are watching from, this is Stand Strong, and we are so excited to have you as part of this awesome event together. You know, we've had one very powerful week. We've had the teachings that have been so faith-inspired, so faith-filled, and wherever you are watching from, we want to thank you that you have been interacting with us, that you've been telling us how the Word of God has not just changed you, it has transformed you from glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. And again, this is no different. Tonight we are in for an awesome time in the presence of God. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Well, you know, I got to tell you something. I, I got to make a confession to you. I've been doing live TV now, I think for at least 15 years. And tonight was the only night I've ever been late for TV. All right, so I was late. But here was the catch, all right? Here was the catch. I stood in the back and I told everyone, hurry, TV waits for no woman. And the man was late. I mean, you know, I just sense God doing something tonight in this house. Come on. I came through the new dome. And we were walking through it and they said, well, do you want to ride the golf cart to get there quicker? I thought, well, I've still got time. I'm going to walk it. And I just was walking with Pastor Kevin and we were just admiring God's blessing in our lives. I was late because of the blessing of God. And I gave my seat up for the ladies in the golf cart. So I've got an excuse, okay? But here's the thing. I came into the house tonight, and I believe there's a spirit of praise in this house. What, 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 a, what a week. Come on, what a week we've had. Who, who's been blessed this week? Come on, who's, who's been blessed? It's been an amazing week. Wasn't last night powerful with Dr. Patricia Bailey? Go on Facebook right now. Let us know where you're watching from. So many of you responded last night, told us where you're watching from. We want to read some of those out tonight again. Please go to Facebook, My Faith TV. Remember, it's interactive, and we want you to place that uh, 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 challenge. Just, just say, where are you watching from? I want cities again tonight, nations again tonight, all over the world. If you're watching on My Faith TV, let us know. If you're watching on uh, uh, Faith USA, let us know. If you're watching on Flow TV in the UK, let us know where you're watching from. You are part of the final night of Stand Strong. We're with you for the next two hours. It's going to be amazing, and we want you to join us in celebration tonight. So let us know where you're watching from. You know, last night, our post of that time in prayer went out to thousands and thousands of people. We broke nearly just over 3,000 people watched us on Facebook alone last night. All right, just the Facebook live stream. You, you need to understand, God is doing something, and you're a part of an army. There is an army rising up. I think we need to sing a song, one of my favorites, but we got to teach these Americans how to do it properly. Okay? So all our guests, I want all of the beyond to come out here. Come on. Come on. Every one of you, get out. Every Bible student, come on. Let's lift our praise to heaven. I want the pastors up front over here. Come on. Where's Pastor Bundy? Pastor Laseko, get up over here. Evangelist Laseko, come over here. And we're going to lead out. We're going to declare every praise in the house tonight. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. Every praise. Hallelujah. 
You know, Pastor Peter Brutz, come join me up over here. Come on, give it up for Pastor Peter Brutz. <laughs> you know, last night, Pastor Pete, there was a call to Bible school. It went out strong. It went out clear. Give, give, me, give me a mic there quickly for Pastor Pete. It went out strong. It went out clear. Now listen, wherever you're watching from, in the whole wide world, you are watching a live broadcast from East London, South Africa, down on the tip of Africa, where there is a fire of God's people burning in this place. Come on. Have I got anyone on fire in this house tonight? There is a burning of God's people in their hearts for more of God. And last night, that call went out. You know, they just told me they're still busy following up every one of the leads and every call and every email. They still, they've got to one 137 people and still counting. Come on. I, I mean, the emails, the website, the everything. I mean, God's people. The word of God went out across the lands and around the world. And the call of God was responded to by people saying, I want to pursue. I, I want to follow the call of God on my life. And I don't want you to miss out the moment and the opportunity because I said to you 24 hours, but remember I said it an hour into the start of the program. So that means you've still got a few moments before time is over. Eight o'clock, get an email, get on the website, rbiafrica.com rbiafrica.com the straps are going to come up for you to show you rbiafrica.com I, I want you to understand this the River Bible Institute the, the email address is there as well rbi.admin at myriver.com this is for men and women of God that are called of God is, is, is the Dean Ron in the house here yeah, where is he okay I want you to understand God is doing something, and He's doing something again tonight. Now, here's the thing, Pastor Pete. Standing in front here are a group of blue shirts, a group known as Beyond Adventure. That's it. That's them. Look at the beautiful We're the Beyond here. Adventure guys here. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Beyond Adventure. All right, we, we, we're about to praise the Lord in a moment. So listen, don't go anywhere. Just be strong. Be strong. you beyond adventurous. All right. Beyond Adventure is a gap year program that is the best year of your entire life. <laughs> uh, 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 am I right in saying that? The best year you'll ever be able to spend your life, wherever you are. If you've ever wanted to do something adventurous, this is a gap year program. One year or six months. Pastor Pete, tell us quickly. That's correct. It's extreme leadership gap year program. It runs from January through to the end of November. That's the full year. Otherwise, January to June, July through to November. That's the six-month option. All right. Now, this is for... Young men and women between the ages of 18, 18 and, and 24. 24. Now, we do have exceptions. Sometimes people do homeschooling and they finish 16, 17. They're welcome to apply as well. Sometimes, because of circumstances, we will look at it if somebody's going on to 25. So but I'm too old. We, you and I just fall out of that category. Okay. So we're just on the other side of But that. our wives our still wives fit can in. can still go, definitely. Okay, okay. Definitely. I'm just checking. I'm just All checking. Right. Okay. So an incredible year. But... Tell us a little bit of the vision, what, what God has birthed in your heart with Beyond Adventure. It's been operating now how many years? About 14 years now. 14 now. years. Yeah, it started right back uh, by a good friend of ours. It started it. It got going. Uh, unfortunately, it started to, it became too much for him to handle, and we saw the vision. Yeah. And you bought the vision, you bought over Beyond Adventure, and the rest has been history. We've grown from strength to strength. We've grown in numbers. There's been over... 
thousand young people right. through the program. And as you were saying with the Bible school, which is equipping the saints for the work of the ministry beyond adventure, is equipping young people and giving them handles. Sometimes they don't even realize it while they're here. Yeah. But it's giving them handles, it's building character for their future. And that's what it's about. It's about developing young people today to have a balanced lifestyle, body, soul, spirit, mind, uh, so that they balance out there and they're the leaders, not of tomorrow, Pastor Andre. Yeah. They are the leaders of today. You and yeah. I, we're still here, but they're the leaders of today. They're taking over from us. So how much better if you've got equipped young people to take over from us yeah. rather than just anybody? Wow. Wow. And that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. It's getting them. We're taking them, as I said uh, some, to somebody else today. I said, we're taking them. We're not taking them out of the comfort zone. We're expanding that comfort zone so that they can endure more in life. Yeah. Because in this life, we will have trials and tribulations. The Word tells us that. You will have challenges. But if you've overcome one obstacle in your life, and then you overcome another obstacle in your life, so in the short time they're with us, they ob overcome a number of obstacles. Things like jumping out of a perfect good airplane, jumping off the with highest... With a parachute. With a parachute. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Jumping off a bridge, and it's not no strings attached. It's got a cable. It's the highest bungee <laughs> bridge in the world. They jump off. Um, skydiving, as I said, uh, scuba diving. They get to do things that you and I probably would never have done in our lives. Yeah. And they get to do it in one year. But it's all based on the Word of God. All based on the Word of God. Because at the end of the day, if Jesus Christ is not your foundation, it doesn't matter what you do. You've got to have Him as your foundation. Now, now let's talk about young people that maybe don't know what they want to do. And that's what the Gap Year program is all designed for. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. What happens is many young people today... If we think back to our time, our parents always used to say, you've got to study hard, get, then go and get a degree or something, otherwise you'll never make it in this life. Yeah. You and I have proven that that's not so. All right, we, 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 right. we, didn't, we, we were naughty at school, so we didn't get all those things. Yeah. But the reality is, it's the character. Well, you were naughty well, okay, than sorry. I was. Okay, yeah, no, okay, no, no, that's so true. That's we've true. got to get this right that, over here. That's true. That's he was true. naughtier than I was at school, but he was my bodyguard. <laughs> When anyone ever picked on me at school, all I had to do was find Peter. All right? They never picked on me again. I want to assure you that. <laughs> but as you were saying, you're taking the young person who is not sure what they really want to do. Yeah. Parents might say, you need to do this. You need to go study. And we understand as parents' hearts, we want the best for our kids. And sometimes education like that is excellent but sometimes they'll go and spend education spend four years three years even seven years studying something that they really don't like and what happens is during a gap year program they get to find themselves a bit they learn a bit of self-discipline um, they learn to tidy up their rooms and they learn uh, how to shave a, shave a number of times and be on time and cut their hair uh, cut their hair okay all right i mean I'm, I'm looked i'm looking at all these parents at home now i'm looking at you in your living room i can see you look in your tv it's got a little spot that's where i'm looking at you and you're saying that's my child i need to send them to beyond adventure you better do it all right, if, if your child doesn't know what God's purpose and plan for their life is, and if they want to find themselves and get direction for their life, Beyond Adventure is the place to it's be. It's a good place to be. It's a good place to be. Beyondadventure.co.za. All right, or you can send an email to bacampus at myriver.com. The phone number's on the screen as well. Uh, I want you to record these details right now. If God is speaking to you, there's something that I believe. I, I want you to understand the discipline that these young students have, all right, over this year of what God has done. So we're going to play a little game here. Can, can, we, can we be naughty? Are we allowed to be naughty on live TV? Your all right, I want, okay. <laughs> I want to show you how disciplined they are compared to the Bible students. All right, I'm going to show you. So all the Bible students on my left, all the beyond form up on my right. Let's see who forms up better. All right, watch. I'm going to show you who gets information quicker. All right, a quick game of form up over here. Watch, there's Bible students. They haven't even got here, the Bible students. You see what I'm saying? Watch this. Get the camera wide. I'm going to show you. I mean, look how they form up, like six or eight of them instead of in threes. I mean, take one good look at this. Pastor Pete, this is what we're talking about, isn't exactly. it? 
I mean, these poor Bible students, they have no idea what's going on. I see there's one or two that have been to beyond. At least they got there in time. No, no, but here's the funny part. There's still Bible students on the stage, and I told them all to form up. I mean, they didn't even take that instruction. I think what we must do is they first come to beyond, then they go to Bible school. I think they need to. I mean, look at them. They're still sitting here. I mean, I can't. They're standing around over here. Where are you going? It's this way. You're supposed to go this way. I mean, look, look. There's Bible students. I can't believe they're even sitting in their chairs there. They're not even here yet. This disobedience is unacceptable. Now, where's Pastor Ron? I think Pastor Ron, you know, I mean, he's not even here. <laughs> I mean, we, we're going to have a little, you know, what's the word here? Match off tonight. All right. Are, are you ready, Bible students? Are you ready beyond adventure? Okay. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to see on the count of three who can get into push-up formation first. Are you ready? One, two, three. Good day to you. Now, 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 these are the instructors standing here. Pete, you're going to lose a point because they're not in push-up position. I, I mean, so, so far the Bible students have been actually more obedient. Pastor Pete got into push-up position, but, but, but the rest of them never got into push-up position. But now, 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 you, you see, this is live TV. I've got to show you. We're talking about discipline here. Look, look how at least they hold their position. These guys don't know how to hold a position. All right? Now, now, are you ready? All right, we're going to go, and we're going to go for, for 10 to start with. All right? And I'm going to ask, Pastor Pete, you call it for me, and let's see who knows how to do 10 good push-ups. You ready? One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine. nine. Ten. Ten. Now, now you've got to keep the position. You've got to keep the position. I mean, look, at they're on their knees already. I mean, you guys get the point for that, okay? So, so ten was good, but ten was just the warm-up, okay? Ten, ten, ten was just the warm-up, all right? Now we're going to go to phase two of the, of the playoff tonight, all right? We're going to jump up. We're going to stand in a circle of three, and we're going to begin to intercede. One, two, three. Now, now, now look at this. Look at this. The, the beyond students win again because, because the Bible students can't count threes. Come on, we're having some fun here tonight. Come on, give yourselves on. a big hand. <laughs> now, now, you see, you see, look, look, they're going. I didn't dismiss anyone. You, 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 you see, Pastor Pete, this is what we're talking about, is it not? Discipline. That's what it's all about. The, the culture of today are not disciplined. But, but, I mean, look, they're still standing in formation. I mean, look at this bunch of people here. What's going on here, Pastor Pete? I think they all need to come to Beyond Adventure. I think you need to come to Beyond Adventure. We need Adventure. another boot camp for these guys, just to get them into shape again. All right. Now, one more playoff tonight. So, so far, you guys have got one point. You've got one point. Okay. You've got two points. All right. Okay. Two points. They say you've got two points. I'll give you an extra point, just because of the formation. The last playoff is who can make the most noise for Jesus. Hey! Now, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Jesus doesn't bark. Okay? So, so you're going to lose a point. Okay? So now you're equal. I said for Jesus, not, not, not for, you know, something else. Okay, so you're now equal again. All right, but here's the thing. 
in order for it to be fair on live TV, all right, it seems like you two ladies are rooting this side. Okay, and you guys should be rooting this side. Oh, yes. We're going to give you equal opportunity, but only beyond first, all right? And then you guys, once off, and there's one point. Pastor Ron, where are you? Pa 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 Pastor Ron, I'm going to have to have you have a playoff over here with, with Pastor Pete. All right, come on, everyone in the house, stand together. Let's make a noise for Jesus. Yay! Hallelujah. Dismissed. If you feel that God is speaking to you, if you're a young person, mom or dad, we're just having some fun around the world. Come to Beyond Adventure. Those details are on the screen once again. Beyondadventure.co.za. Wherever you are in the whole wide world, this is an amazing program open just for you. And we wanted to show you just a little bit of this program. So we're going to go quickly into an advert that clearly lays out everything about Beyond Adventure. This is a behind-the-scenes look. Record the details and become a part of Beyond Adventure today. Beyond Adventure offers the most exciting, exhilarating, and comprehensive gap year program to date. Its concept of extreme education is unique in South Africa and is designed to provide a challenging environment for young people to discover their leadership potential. Leadership deals with direction, vision, purpose, and principles, and the Beyond Adventure program is developed to meet, challenge, and grow the complete individual, body, soul, and spirit. Beyond Adventure is situated ideally on the Bushman Sands Golf Estate near Port Alfred, allowing for its large number of adventure activities. These activities, including zip lining, self-defense, and hiking skills, form part of the Adventure Recreation Association course that Beyond Adventure students will qualify in, receiving an Adventure Activity Facilitator Certificate upon completion. The program includes a number of hard skills and soft skills training that focus on the physical wellness and ability of the students, as well as life skills and communication, problem solving, group dynamics, and spiritual integrity. Throughout the year, there will also be opportunities for students to go to the extreme with activities such as scuba diving, bungee jumping, 4x4 off-roading, and skydiving. Beyond Adventure is a one-of-a-kind, specifically formulated program that will grow and mature the individual in all facets of life, highlighting and enhancing their strengths in preparation for their future. Beyond Adventure, training tomorrow's leaders today. Come on, give it up for Beyond Adventure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Patricia Bailey to this final night of Stand Strong. Come on, put your hands together. It's a little bit youthy tonight, is it not, Dr. I think Patricia? It's fun. I think it's awesome. I can think of someone, quite a few people in the United States that I hope are watching and are saying, I need to get my kid to East London. That's right. That's incredible. That's incredible. right. You, you, you know this. The program has been running 14 years. Now, we have limited space every year because of the intensity of the program. But the thing is that every parent that sends their child says, you've given us a different child back home. They come as a child, they go home as an adult. Foundation in the Word of God. The whole course is based on the Word of God, but it's an extreme gap year program. And it's not Bible school, but it's a spiritual imparted time in the Word of God, but in many other spheres of life, body, soul, and spirit. And that's what our a total character development, and that's what God birthed in our hearts many, many years ago. And that's why as Faith Broadcasting Family of Networks, we, we embarked on this because many of our staff people have come through beyond adventure. Yeah, because I tell you, if you want to employ someone, you need to make sure they've got beyond adventure on their CV. Then you get a disciplined individual. You get a timeless individual. You get an individual that's allowed to develop in, in certain character skills that is absolutely amazing. That's exactly what it is, spiritual life boot camp. 
You know, tonight we asked where you're watching from. People are watching all over. Last night we had so many comments of just the powerful Word of God that was shared. And, you know, tonight uh, Julia is watching from Kenya. And uh, she's, she, she writes to us and just says she's watching in the great city or the nation of Kenya. Charlton's watching in Parkwood, Cape Town. And uh, he says, what an amazing message last night by Dr. Patricia Bailey. I'm looking out for tonight's message. All right, so uh, that's Charlton down in Cape Town. Pinky is watching in the Free State. Uh, Baiti is watching in Zambia. Raymond's watching in Kampala, Uganda. Lindsay's watching in Malibu Village uh, down in Cape Town. Awi is watching as well. Uh, Prince and Churchill's watching in Uganda. Maria's watching in Namibia, Vintuk. Michaela, Michaela, I believe, is watching in Kenya, Nairobi, Teresa in Rudapur, Jarman in Craddock, Eastern Cape, uh, Nahoon Valley, East London, Prince is watching as well, Beverly's Cape Town, South Africa, Dion in Musenberg. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Nairobi, Delmos, Margate, uh, Lusaka, Zambia, another one in Kenya. I mean, people are just saying where they're watching from tonight. Lagos, Nigeria, all right? I mean, Uganda, uh, another one in Kenya, another one, Kampala, Uganda, another one, Phoenix, Nairobi, another. I mean, it, the list just goes on and on. Come on, let's give everyone a big God bless you. Welcome. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Tonight, I know the Word of God is going to challenge lives. It's our last night of Stand Strong. We prayed last night. We interceded. We, we broke something in the spiritual realm last night. And we ministered the Word of God, and the call of God went out to people. And that's what I believe people have responded to. But tonight, I want us to, as we get into the Word of God in a few moments, what has God laid on your heart for tonight? Tell us just briefly. I believe that faith was designed to operate in an atmosphere of righteousness. For people to walk before God and approach God unashamed, with confidence, knowing that whatever we approach God for, this is the confidence that we have. Right. That when we pray, He knows He hears us. We don't go with Him before Him with a sense of guilt. and It's not predicated upon what we've done right. It's predicated upon everything He did to make us a victor. So we want to boost our faith tonight. Wow. To another wow. level. It's going to happen tonight. Absolutely. I, I, can you sense the presence of the Lord here tonight? Awesome. I just sense God in the house tonight. And you know what I want us to do? I want us to worship for just a few moments, you know, every night is different. There's never a plan except His voice. And so you might be watching on Friday afternoon in the United States of America. In fact, it might even be Friday morning in California right now. People are watching around the world. You know, right now it's just after 10 a.m. It's about 10.41 in California. It's 11.41 in Mountain Time. It's uh, 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 12.41 over in central time as they say it and I mean it's 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 already 1241 as it goes across the time zones Jen it's just amazing do you know that right now it's just on 640 in uh, the United Kingdom in it's 640 as well in Nigeria you need to understand something we are meeting across multiple time zones it's 740 right yeah but you know on the other side it's already 840 over on the other side of Africa. The time zones in Madagascar and Mauritius, the islands of Mauritius. And then if we go with our broadcast around the world through Apple TV and Roku, over one million people have downloaded our app. If you have not downloaded the app yet, you need to do it. Google and search Faith Broadcasting Network. It's an app that you can download. It's free of charge. Go to the App Store. Go to the Google Store. Faith Broadcasting Network. Download the app. You can carry it on your iPhone. You can watch uh, Faith Broadcasting 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can, on VOD, on, on video on demand, you can look at all your favorite preachers as you want. Whenever you want, right there on Faith Broadcasting app. Here's the thing. Tonight we end Stand Strong. Sunday we're going to have another powerful live broadcast as we teach on the message of faith and that final part. And then, Monday night, the heavens are going to open 
we are going to be with you for four hours on Monday night. Four hours on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Next week, we are going on with a second week of Faith Connect. But I want you to understand, Faith Connect is not anything different to what we've experienced this week. It's the Word of God being released through mighty men of, of God and women of God from all over are coming together next week. And we are going to, under one voice, we are going to worship Him. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to be patching to the USA. There is so much that's going to be happening, giving you updates of the goodness of God and what God is about to do. We're going to be making certain announcements. Faith Broadcasting, Jen, is truly expanding. Do you know what is so exciting to me is in the world today, there's so many distractions and there's so many voices out there. And it's as though, and this is why I'm so excited about the word that you're going to be speaking. It's as though the church has lost the identity. The, they've lost knowing who they actually are in Christ Jesus. And so for me, the joy and the privilege and the exciting thing is that every time we go over air, especially live, Every time we do that, it's like mobilizing again the kingdom of God. You know, the word says that we take it by force. You know, we really, we stand up knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And because of that, we walk by faith and not by sight. And everything we touch prospers. Everything we do is a success. Why? Because of who lives on the inside of us, the life and the light and the goodness and the glory. Nothing is impossible because as He is, so are we. And so I really believe in these conferences, that's exactly what is happening. I am so grateful that it is being designed by God Himself, that whatever goes over the airwaves from this network is a call to every born-again child of God to mobilize in faith, in Christ, to know who you are, so the enemy will stop deceiving you and that you can stand up in his righteousness and know this is the time to take territory this is the time to wake up and understand who you are in Christ Jesus and I believe that that's exactly what has happened this whole week it's what's going to happen next week it's just going to be getting the church mobilized again to understand we take back what the enemy has stolen that's right that's our heart just to be obedient to him and next week is going to be one of the most powerful weeks of the year. I, I really want to encourage you, be ready. Connect with us. You know, I, I stand in awe, and we'll announce a lot of this next week, but I stand in awe at what God has done. To think that right now, you sitting here, I'm sitting here, and this signal is going across the whole continent of Africa. Over 50 million homes in Africa through our networks. You, you see, the difference is we're not just a channel. We're a network. There are multiple downlinks. There are multiple terrestrial feeds. There are, there are so many ways that the signal is going out. There are multiple satellites. It's not just one. Multiple channels across Africa. Into the United Kingdom. Over 11 million homes the signal is in. In the UK, there are only 18 million homes in the UK that have television. We're in 11 million of them. All right? That's what I want you to understand. We are across the whole of the USA. I mean, think of it. From New York to California, right now live. Come on, isn't that amazing? We are live right now across the whole of the, U of the USA. And people's lives are being touched and changed. Here's the thing. Can you imagine if all of us together, and that, that's not excluding the potential of 200 million homes on Apple TV and Roku. That's excluding those of which we know there's over a million have already downloaded our app. Think about all of us together worshiping Him. One worship, one sound across continents. Think about His glory. Dr. Patricia, there is coming, and I want to say this prophetically, and I'm going to say this next week again. 
But there is coming prophetically. Well, I'm saying it prophetically, but it's coming. There is going to be another mighty move of God. There is going to be in my lifetime and my generation an outpouring of His Spirit over the next few years. I don't know when. I don't know what. And I don't know where. But I want to declare to you as Faith Broadcasting Network, when it happens, we will be there. We will be carrying it every day if we need. We will be a part of it. We are going to show the world the goodness of Jesus. There is going to be a movement. It's going to be like in the, in, in, in the time of old. It's going to be like when Jesus left and he said, tarry and wait until you are endured with power. It's going to be like an upper room experience. It's going to be like an outpouring. I'm telling you, we've had revivals. But this is going to be a revolution. This is going to be a mighty move of God. I, I, I declare it now, right now. I put my words into the atmosphere. There is coming a revival in the years ahead. And you know what? It's not going to be one continent. Every move of God up to now, there's always been a move on a continent, in a city. And hundreds and thousands have flocked to that place. I believe this next move of God, you are going to have a problem. Many of you are going to have blood noses. You're going to have blue eyes. You're going to be walking into street poles because you're going to be glued to your phone. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear. You, you're going to laugh. You're going to laugh right now. You laugh right now. I'm telling you, people are going to be walking, tripping over their own feet because the glory of God is going to come through a handheld device. You, you need to understand something is going to happen. There is going to be a movement on social media that people are not going to be able to put down their device. And I'm telling you, there is going to be such a strong movement that people are going to be on their device and it's going to happen supernaturally. That the images will just come on their devices I believe that. without them even asking. They're going to be Googling something. And when they Google it, it's just going to result because it's going to be the biggest hashtag movement ever. <laughs> You know, I don't know who's got the biggest Facebook following. I, I don't know if it's Katy Perry, Perry or who, one of these artists in a secular. They all compete against each other. Who's got 60 million followers and all the rest of it? It's going to be nothing to the next move of God. Twitter is going to hang. You, you need to understand. Facebook is going to, Facebook is just going to have to get more servers. All of what God has, all that has happened in the world, let me say it this way, up to now has been established for one purpose and one purpose only, the glory of God, Amen. His goodness. Amen. And we're going to take back the media. Absolutely. We're going to take it back, Jen. I believe it. And that's why I'm so excited because if you look through history, if you look through Bible times, everything from the beginning, everything was first declared in the Spirit. Jesus Himself is a result of the word going out. Everything that is here is because of a word that was spoken. And for years, we've been speaking over the airwaves. We've yeah. been speaking the glory of God. We've been speaking His healing. We've been speaking His goodness. We've been speaking His tangible presence over and over and over and over again. We've been speaking and declaring by faith. And let me tell you, God says in His word that not one word that goes out from His mouth will return back 
void. Not right. one. It will always produce what it set out to produce. And when we speak the glory of God, when we speak revival, when we speak every eye to see, every ear to hear the glory of God, it will happen. It is right. about to right. happen. You right. can feel it in the atmosphere. Those of you, every Christian, let me tell you, ears are going to be ringing with the glory of God. It's already started. There's already a rumbling in the earth. There is such an expectation already being stirred up and it comes through the airwaves from continent to continent to continent because the glory of the Lord come will on. cover the earth as the waters Hallelujah. cover the sea. Come on! Come on! Come on, stand to your feet right now. Listen. I believe with all my heart, God has not given us one of the biggest studios in the world by accident. If not the biggest studio in the world. I never did it for any other reason, but God said to me, prepare for what I'm about to do. These rumblings are going to be happening. Ooh, like a volcano begins to rumble. Like a volcano begins to have tremors. Like a volcano begins to tell through the word, what's that word? Seismology or seismic activity or whatever they call it. It begins to start shaking. Oh, come on, listen to me. It begins to start shaking. And the scientists say it will erupt. I tell you tonight that there is seismic activity in the spiritual realm taking place across the world today. There is a rumbling. There is a rumbling forming right now. Something is happening. Something is happening. And I declare to you there is coming a mighty move of God in this land in your land, in every land that is listening to my voice and those that will cover the whole wide world. There will be a mighty revival, declares the Lord. I can't get this out of my spirit. God saying to me, get ready for 2020. I can't get it out of my spirit. On Wednesday night, I'm not sure if we were on air or off air, but I spoke a word over Jeremy Pearson's. We were off air, they tell me, and I spoke a word over Jeremy Pearson's. And when I spoke the word over him, God clearly said to me, tell him, 24 months. 24 months. We were walking back to the green room after the meeting. He said, Andre, I want to tell you that you are spot on. Because God has been speaking to him. He said, it was not by accident that I arrived into South Africa on my 38th birthday. And God told him, when he turns 40, there will be one of the greatest moves. And there will be something that will begin to explode in his ministry and in his life. I declare to you, listen, this is not by accident right now. You better get ready. You have 24 months to start preparing your heart for what God wants to do. There are ministries that need to be birthed. Bible students, you better get ready. There is going to be a global move of God. You better be ready as a Bible student. I'm telling you, every pastor and every church leader right now, you better get ready. Everything that you are facing right now, those birth pains that you are facing right now, 
those things that the enemy is trying to hold you back right now don't you for one moment believe that it is only you because you are in the firing line you better stand stronger than ever before because 24 months from now you will not recognize your ministry i declare to you by the power of god that there is coming a move and a revival in your church it's coming it's coming it's coming receive it now in jesus name I, I just i need you to get this in the spirit you need to get this in the spirit i don't know where you are you got to get this in the spirit the power of god you got to get this some of you need to stretch up and receive it some of you need to pull it into your life some of you need to receive your financial breakthrough some of you need to receive your spiritual inner healing some of you need to receive those souls that are coming into your into your church right now some of you need to receive that wife that husband some of you need to receive those children that are going to be birthed through you in the next 24 months some of you need to receive those houses some of you need to receive those cars some of you need to receive those things that god is going to do because of his glory and his goodness because the word of god says as the waters covered the the sea so shall my glory be it's coming it's coming it's coming says the lord Oh, Jenny, I felt God say, get a seed ready. We're going to sow. We're going to sow right now. Get a seed from my wallet. We're going to sow right now. I want to sow. I want to sow into one of the greatest moves of God that God's ever going to do in my life. Listen to me. Wherever you are watching right now, I just feel the Lord said, we need to seal this. We need to, we need to sow a seed by faith within 24 months. I want to tell you this seed is about to turn your situation around. There is a season. There is a time the Lord has told me right now prophetically, 24 months. Uh, you need to sow a seed and believe God for the next 24 months of your life. Something is going to happen. Get ready. Get ready. It's going to be one of the greatest things that is ever about to happen in your life. I'm not talking here about tipping God. I'm not talking here about bringing an offering. I'm talking here about sowing a seed as a believer by faith to say, Lord, tonight I want you to recognize I am sowing by faith for what you, I believe, are going to do in my ministry, in my life, in my church, in my business. There are business people listening right now. You need to sow a seed. There are church pastors listening right now. This channel has blessed you. This channel has turned your life right side up. This channel is changing your life. You need to sow a seed. You need to be obedient to what God is wanting to do because God is speaking to us about going around the whole wide world that not one would miss. I have a mandate. Jenny has a mandate. Each of us have a mandate. You need to understand, 24 months, we will be in Australia. I declare it. We will be in New Zealand. I declare it. We will be in India. We will be in China. I don't want to, to even ask how. All I know is God is doing it. God is doing it. And tonight we sow a seed. Tonight we sow a seed. Come as you want to, as you want to, just come. Sow a seed tonight. You at home on TV, go, go now. The websites are on there. If you're in the United Kingdom, sow a seed for your family. Sow a seed for your life. Sow a seed for your business. Sow a seed for your ministry. If you're in the USA, quickly change the straps. If you're in the USA, I, I, want, you to, I want you to sow a seed on the TV. There's details coming in the USA. You can go to myfaithusa.com. Sow a seed. Be obedient. 
You can connect with us. You can do what God is, is wanting to do. Sow that seed in Africa here right now. Change the straps in Africa right now. I want you to understand there are details on your screen. You can sow a seed by faith. I want you to call it a 2020 seed. I want you to declare it. I want you to record it. I want you to write it down in your Bible, in your notebook. I want you to record it because today, what is the date today? 27th. Oh, there it is. 27th of October 2017. I want you to record. I sowed a seed for my 2020 that God would, would, would open up and that God would do all that He has promised, all that He has said in my life, and watch what He's going to do. Oh, Shabbat I just believe it. Oh. Jesus. Now you just do something. Wherever you're watching, just be obedient. Just do something. I had not planned this at all. This is a move of God. God is doing something. Dr. Patricia, come get ready. Come and get ready. Bring your mic. Come get ready. I just believe we, we're still going to worship, but I just sense, I just sense, I want you just to, I sense, Dr. Patricia, tonight's offering, the seed that is sowing tonight is going to set us apart for what God has for us. For us to go around the world as Faith Broadcasting Network. Now, now our Faith Connect is next week. It's not this week even. I don't know why we're doing this this week. I just felt this is what God said. But this is what I believe. I believe more than ever that God is going to raise up an army of faith believers. Faith believers. It's not by accident that we are called Faith Broadcasting Network. We could have been called anything else. <laughs> I need to say this. I need to, I need to say this, and I, I just want you to hear my heart. We are one of the youngest TV ministries in the world. I'm talking in length of operation. Here's the craziest part of it all. When God gave us the name, and God gave us the name through my wife, we were praying about it, and God told Jenny what to call the network. Do you want to know my immediate reaction? Somebody already has that name. I said to Jenny, you've got to be kidding me. Are you telling me around the whole wide world there is not one network? Listen to what I'm saying. That is carrying the name of who we are. A family of faith. I was shocked when we did a search for the trademarks to find there is no one. That's how you know it's God. That's how you know it's God. And you know what? 
we just called it Faith Broadcasting Network. And every application we did for the trademark was approved. Every application around the world because God said, Jenny, Andre, I felt like Abram to Abraham from what he wanted to do to take us into the new. I want you to understand my heart. And when he spoke about this name to us and we did the transition. Years and years ago, we stand now. I believe in His perfect place of obedience. To do nothing more than carry the anointing of God through the airwaves into homes like yours all over the world. I was speaking to one of our partners on the phone about one hour before we came on air. I was on a hotline with the USA, one of our key partners. His name's Ben. And I was speaking to Ben, and Ben and his team have walked the road with us. They're partners in the vision with us. He said to me, Andre, God is about to bring us. Listen to what he said to me. He said, God is about to bring us founding partners that are going to help us take this to the whole world. You see, I already see something that maybe you don't see yet. I already see myself and you, Doc, standing up, speaking French. I see you speaking Spanish. I see you speaking Russian, German, every other language. I see it happening. I see a network that is going to go into ethnic and people groups, and that's why tonight is again about missions. Tonight is, is the heart. You hear as a missionary. Now, you and I can't do this in the natural. But I'm telling you, there are going to come networks and stations alongside of us as a family. This is what he's doing. He's bringing us men and women around the world that have already established a network. This is not about us necessarily starting a new thing. That will happen too. But he's going to bring us networks and other things and other stations from all over the world. And they're going to say, I want to be part of the faith family. A faith family. And we're going to have one of the greatest faith families in the whole wide world. God is going to do it. God is going to do it. I want you to see the screen right now. There's details how you can be a part. The screen is rotating continually. If you're in the USA, go to My Faith USA and become a partner. You can, there's a little block that says Partner Connect. Be one of the founding partners. If you're here in Africa, hey, next week's Faith Connect anyway. Why don't you as a partner be one of the first? In fact, you know what? I think all of the seed is already the first. I see this as expansion seed tonight. I see this Jen is almost a pre-start to what God is going to do next week. Pastor, you know the Bible says that 
In the last days, the Lord said, out of all the things to look for in his return, will he find faith in the earth? So he wow. took two people that would dare to believe God and a man that's smart enough to listen to his wife. <laughs> and she said, faith, because in my mind, I would think the same thing too. Surely someone has that. But God hid that name and preserved that just for you so that every person watching that would connect with the faith family. In the last days, you're going to need faith in the earth with all the things that we're seeing and everything that's happening. And God says, will I find faith in the earth? So you're connecting with a network that's proclaiming the word of faith, building you up in your faith so that you can stand against all the wiles of the enemy and the, the storms of life. You're connected to a faith family that in, in times when your faith feels a bit weak, you can go on to faith broadcast network, get your faith built up. Because one thing you can know for sure, 24 hours around the clock every day the word of faith a faith building message is going to be coming from this network into your home or whatever device you're watching to build up your faith because you're connected as a partner to the faith family that's right Incredible. that's right i just sense god is connecting hearts tonight All over the USA, it's morning, it's afternoon, all over Europe, all over Africa. I want you to realize something, Africa. You were the ones that obeyed. You were the ones that obeyed when Jesus was walking to Gethsemane, well, when he was walking to be crucified. When I realized that, Dr. Patricia, this continent is rich, rich with wealth of an understanding of spiritual matters and the kingdom of God like no other nation, like no other continent in the world. And I found it so significant that when Jesus was carrying that cross, towards that point of crucifixion. And the Bible says he stumbled and he fell. There was one man who came to help him carry the cross. That man, the Bible says, was a man from Africa. A man from Africa, to be particular, an Egyptian. One of our great nations in Africa. I found that so symbolic. Because for years after years, missionaries have been coming to Africa. But you, the people of Africa, you, the men and women, you, the part, of Faith Broadcasting Network, you have helped us take this message, the heart of God from Africa now to the world. There is no other network that is doing that. There is no other channel that is doing that. Every other channel is coming to Africa. We are the only channel from Africa that is going to the world. I have made that statement time and time again, and I'm yet to be proven wrong. And I'm not just talking Christian channels. I'm talking secular channels. There is not one secular channel in South Africa that is going to the world, not one. Now, they might go up into Africa. There might be certain, but there is not one channel that is taking from Africa anything to the rest of the world. Sure, we broadcast rugby in Australia, and sure, we do that in sports events. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a 24-hour-a-day channel that originates from Africa. 
I'm talking about a channel that has a heart and a passion that is saying, this is it, and goes. And you know what? Tonight, God wants you to help us go. Now, I don't want to take more of your time. I don't know how you're going to pick up from here. But this is missions night. You're a missionary sent, and I want to thank you for coming to Africa. But I also want people to know that we are carrying your signal all over Africa. Absolutely. All over the USA. All over the UK. Because God has told us to partner with you. You don't come here asking us for anything. You come to be a blessing to us. And you're going to be with us Monday, Tuesday, next week as well. But I want you to respond. Let's just lift our hands, just worship Him just for a moment. Oh, come on. Let's just, wherever we are, prepare our hearts. Oh, Rabbi Shetebe. Let's worship all down. Thank you, Jesus. in Africa. Let's worship. Come with us in the UK. Let's worship. Come with us in the United States of America. Let's worship together. Let's get a spirit of worship going live right now across the continents of the world. Just for a few moments before the word of the Lord comes. Oh, let's worship. Father, we just come before you tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahweh. And Yahweh, we thank you that before the foundations of time, the Bible says that we were with you from the beginning and we shall be with you in the end. Yahweh, we come before you and we decree and declare tonight that that which you predestined for our life, and that which was your design before the beginning of time, that we will walk in the fullness of everything that you predestined for our lives. We declare and decree tonight that yokes will be broken and destroyed because of the anointing. And we pray tonight and decree in the name of Jesus 
that the very entrance of your word shall bring light and illumination and even understanding to the simple. We ask you to roll back the clutter and the chaos of our mind and every realm of words that have been spoken over our life to endeavor to intimidate us and to make us draw back and to see ourselves less than what you predestined. We decree tonight that the identity of what you wrought through Christ Jesus in our life shall not only be made manifest, but we shall come to a comprehension and an understanding and we shall embrace it. And we decree that our faith is going to another level tonight. And we serve notice on you, Satan, tonight in the name of Jesus that you have no lot, you have no part in any endeavor of our life. For we remind you that the word of God says that our God, Yahweh, dwells in the midst of his people and he dwells in the affairs of his people. So tonight we decree that the sovereign God, the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth tonight just happens to be our father and we call him Yahweh tonight. We call him Yahweh tonight. We call him Yahweh. Genesis 1:26 through 28. This God that we serve decided in his mind before time began that I will make man after my image and after my own likeness will I create man and I will make sure that their identity is established before time ever began so that there will never have to be an identity crisis with my people. And I will make sure that they understand their identity before they understand their purpose. I will help them to understand that the purpose comes after identity. And where there is a lack of identity is where the enemy will endeavor to come in and to pervert, to divert and, and pervert purpose. But God wanted his people to know who you are by the grace of God from the very beginning, from the very origin, so that the enemy in no way would be able to deceive you. We see in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, God says, I created you in my image and in my likeness. That means that your gender, your life, your purpose, everything was decided before you were ever born, before you ever came from the birth canal. And God says, after he revealed to us who our identity is, that our identity is not predicated upon our gender, is not predicated upon our ethnicity, is not predicated upon what part of the world we're born in, is not predicated upon any ethnic linguistic groupings. It is predicated upon who he made you to be before time ever began. And because you are created in his image and his likeness, out of that, he says, now have dominion in all the earth. So notice that God says, you must first know who you are before you can ever understand what you're called to do. You may be seated. The reason why God made sure that we knew who we were before he ever gave assignments to what we're to do, once you know who you are, it doesn't matter what the assignment is, you're not threatened, you're not intimidated, you don't draw back because you know whose you are. Shout amen, somebody. So when you understand that you're created in the image and likeness of Almighty God, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, are you hearing me? If God is with you and God is in you, the Word of God declares that not only are we created in this image and likeness, watch what this wise God does. He says, I don't want it predicated upon your power, your intellect, your, your education, your background. I'm going to give you my nature. I'm going to give you my ability. I'm going to give you my life. I'm going to give you everything that makes me who I am. And it's so amazing. We shared on this a little last night how we are so ready to embrace the fact that through one man, sin entered the earth. We see that in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter and the 17th verse. I'm going to piggyback from that tonight. We readily embrace that through one man, sin entered the earth. And I, I kept trying to ask God when I got back to my room last night, how can I bring more clarity? So it's kind of like if one person has a particular, like say a flu, 
And then they come into a room and they touch something and they cough and they don't cover their mouth and then somebody in their proximity, they catch the flu. And then another person's in their proximity, catches the flu and then it passes on. We can embrace that, we can understand that, our minds can digest that. But why is it that we cannot believe that the same law and the same way that things can pass from one on to the next to the next, can we not embrace the fact that righteousness was God's idea from the beginning? So let's just pause there. From the very beginning, God never intended for man to fall. God never intended for man to operate in anything else but the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He never intended for man to see himself in any other way except God's righteousness. To be in right standing with God, to be in union with God, to be in fellowship with God. He never intended anything else. So that's the way you originally thought. I need you to understand, you didn't begin to be who you are when you came out of your mother's womb. You began to be who you are before you were ever born. So before you came, became to be the person that you know yourself to be now, you were already made righteous with him. You came from God. You're creating this image and likeness. It's only after the fall of man that we come to this earth and we begin to learn and life situations and circumstances try to begin to, to rob us from who God says that we really are. But every part of you is wired to trust God. Every part of you was created to trust God. Every part of you was created to be like God. Every part of you was created to be limitless. I remember when I first became a missionary and started out being raised up on the teal and Daisy Osmond and I started working it's interesting that Kenya keeps coming across tonight and remember to pray for Kenya as they're going through a little bit of times of instability because of the elections we speak peace to Kenya tonight in the name of Jesus say amen to that I remember we were working in a little village area called Loy Tok Tok and Lord Tok Tok is not far from the Mount Kilimanjaro. It's a little very, very, very rural area. And an area outside of Lord Tok Tok was a very witchcraft area. And it was, again, pretty much like Agacito Togo, where people said, oh, it's a witchcraft area. You know, don't go there. It's very dangerous. And I'm like, ah, lions and tigers and bears, oh, bye. But when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, and that's one of the things that I learned from the Osmonds. They, T.L. Osmond taught us to, to practice an awareness of Jesus in you. Say that with me tonight with boldness. Practice an awareness of Jesus in you. Say it with some confidence. Practice an awareness of Jesus in you. So we went out into this particular area, and it was known to be a witchcraft town. We were having a big open-air crusade, and I just like to show my God off. I just ask God, just throw your weight around. So in this particular witchcraft area, we said, let there be a show. Now, let's see whose God is God. And I'm 21 years old. So we go out into this open area and we're having this big crusade. And on the first couple of rows on the crusade ground were all of these uh, witch doctors and with their incantations and with all the white powder on their face and all their little stuff and, you know, doing that little whatever. And I purpose in my heart, do not even be distracted. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I continue to preach the gospel. We continue to have a healing crusade. We continue to see the God perform miracles. And then after the crusade was over, we're now headed back to our room. And when I got back to my hotel room, for a long time we used to show this, and the, the shirt that I had on, and it made me really mad that the enemy messed up my outfit. And I had just bought that outfit from the Limited. And I liked that outfit because it was this nice little orange Limited outfit. But holes and fiery darts there was fire around the edge of every hole and what the what the darts where the holes were were like my heart and and my back and different parts and vital organs and you could literally see the holes it was one of the people that with me and said you know pet look at your shirt what in the world happened and we we'd done nothing but preach the crusade and went straight to the hotel we took the shirt off i had another undergarment under the shirt and held the shirt up and you could clearly see the holes you could see, clearly see the fiery where it had been burnt around though you could clearly see like it was darts but the Bible says that when we walk in the love of God, the wicked one toucheth us not. The Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That no matter what the enemy tries to launch against you, it shall not come nigh thee. Shout amen somebody tonight louder than you've ever shouted. It's because of knowing who you are in him. That's what boosts your faith up to another level because you're operating your faith in an atmosphere that has total confidence that God is pleased with me, that has total, total confidence that I walk with God, that has total confidence that God wants more from me than I even desire for myself, that has total confidence that as Philippians 4.19 says that my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We were working in Angola right after the war. 
Val is here. She was working with us. We did a five-year community development, an international community development project that where we brought in literacy in rural areas and computers and running water. And we actually brought electricity and just brought a whole development area, even out into an area called Kakawako and Boa Vista. And when we first started going into, into Angola right after the war, I mean, Angola was torn from the war. But from a young girl, it was something in my heart. I would go around the house, and I know my family thought I was crazy. I would say, I'm going back to my people. As a little girl, I said, I'm going back to Africa to help my people. And my mother looked at me, what people? How you going to get to Africa? Who you know in Africa? I don't know, but one day I'm going to go to Africa, and I'm going to go help my people. I'm supposed to go back, and I'm going to help my people. I'm going to go back, and I don't know, but I'm just going to go help my people. And so all along as a little child, that purpose was already established. And so when I met Teal and Daisy Osborne at Noble Hayes Bible School, they called me out of the congregation just like this tonight. And Teal pointed at me and said, I see nations in you. Those words release a prophetic destiny, unlock a prophetic destiny in my life they took me under their wings, and from that time, there was never any question about my identity or my purpose. Are you hearing me tonight? When we were there in Luanda and working, we were endeavoring, during the time we were doing this community development project, there was a report, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was flying on a flight in the United States, somewhere in the States, and in the seat pocket of the plane in front of me was this magazine, a honey magazine a secular magazine. And I opened up the magazine and there was a centerfold article about the Angola girls. And it was telling a story about this one reporter that had gone to, Luan, to, to Angola after the war to do a story and a reporter story on how Uganda, I mean, excuse me, how Angola, excuse me, how Angola was faring, how they were developing after the war, the state of Angola after the war. The reporter, when he checked into his hotel room, he heard a knock on the door about one o'clock in the morning. And there stood a father with his little girl, endeavoring to sell his little girl to the reporter to have food for the family. And as I read the story, it said the reporter shift his story to now tell the story about Angola girls. And it was talking about child trafficking and how child trafficking and prostitution, child prostitution. And, 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 I, and my heart just felt like there's someone there for me to go rescue. I must, I must learn about, I must go there. I must go there to help. I, I've got to do something. I'm called to be a part of the nature of God on the inside of me is calling me to respond. Somebody in Angola is calling me. So we endeavored to go and follow up on the story. We could not find. We kept in searching and searching. And, and you know, in those days in Angola, it was really the media and everything was very much controlled by the government. Very much controlled, even more so than today. So we got there, and we just really couldn't get to the root of the story. And we kept driving past this box car, a set of box train cars that were not on a train track. They were off in a field, and they had graffiti all over them. And there's something about that box car just kept drawing my attention, drawing my attention. And then one day, and we had the cameras with us, and I said, stop the car. There's something about that row of box train cars that's just, what is it? So we stopped and we went, and so I said, you know, we're just going to stand here and just do a story. And we had our camera person. They had the camera on the inside of the Jeep, and they had the windows up, and it was tinted windows because you couldn't report things. We had to smuggle footage out of the country. Everything was controlled. And as we finished doing the shoot about the box train cars, because we heard that there was a school. That's what they meant. It had school because they didn't have proper schools, and there was this one man that was having school there. So then someone on the team got a little bit bold. They said, well, why don't we go knock on the door and ask, can we come in? I said, well, look at here. This is enough already. We got the story. Let's just go home with this. They said, no, let's just go and check it out. So we went and knocked on the door. We knocked on the door. And as the door opened up, the gate, there stood a man from Korea, a missionary from Korea, from Dr. Paul Youngie Cho's church who had been serving there as a missionary. He previously had been serving in Mozambique. His family had gotten sick in Mozambique, and now they had come over to Angola to serve. So when the man opened up the gate, he spoke Korea, and there was another gentleman that was with him from the United States that was a white Southern Caucasian in Angola. So now what's the odds of this? Southern Caucasian, a uh, Korean in Angola, so it's a Portuguese-speaking country in Africa with the Korean and then a southern white American. Man, that's called gumbo. That's a mixture. That's a fusion. So I began to 
articulate to the American what I was saying in English. He translated to the Korean what I was saying in English, and they began to speak back to each other in Portuguese. So as I told them while we were there about the story about these little girls, again, we're talking about knowing who you are in him. This is what boosts your faith to another level because it's not predicated upon how strong your faith is or how much you pray. I need you to understand tonight that God put a package together for us that not only boosts our faith to another level, but it's Christ at work in us, not only the hope of glory, but our righteousness is of him. Our victory is of him. In him we live and move and have our being. We are God's embodiment in the earth. We are his hands. We're his feet. We're all he has. So the man that was from Korea went and stood there and opened up his manual. I told him what we were there. We opened up his prayer diary. And I told him, I said, while we were there, we were looking for these young girls, and we'd heard the story. And the Korean missionary began to weep. And he began to speak to the American in Portuguese and said, let me show you my prayer diary. And it had all the Asian characters in writing. Val is here as a witness. And he says, God said this morning, in my prayer time, I am sending you a woman that will help you with these little girls, that will help rescue these little girls. And he began to spell out everything that God said. Now, God started with me with a magazine in a seat pocket of a secular magazine. And in obedience to what I sensed God was saying, I stepped out in faith. My stepping out in faith and the act of obedience was the manifestation to somebody else's prayer appeal and request. The man now began to collaborate with us, which turned out to be a five-year mission by which the end result was 6,000 children not only rescued, but had a chance to go to school, and we set up the school right in front of the brothels. I'm here to tell you that you are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Everything that you need to do, everything you need to be equipped, every assignment that God ever gives you is on the inside of you, and the empowerment, and the power, and everything that you need to do it. You came equipped to earth to do it. Faith was designed to operate in an atmosphere of righteousness. Faith knows what to do. Faith is absolutely just waiting on you to release the word of faith, to believe who you are, and the demons in hell and principalities, they know when a believer knows who they are in Christ. Are you hearing me today? As you begin to meditate, and a lot of times it does take meditating because for so many years we've been programmed, we've been programmed, we've been programmed with so much negativity. We've been programmed, we've been programmed with so much doubt and unbelief that we have to go in, take the Word of God, apply the Word of God, pull down those strongholds of doubt and unbelief in our mind. They're trying to make us think that we can and we're not enough and we don't pray enough. And especially in the continent of Africa, because many times the way uh, uh, different denominations are set up, that it's all predicated upon do you fast enough, do you pray enough, or pour some oil on your wallet and uh, eat some grass here and go let somebody speak over you here and let somebody go do this in order to get the power that you need and all this type of stuff that has nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with faith. Faith is simply the nature of every person that's called into God's citizenship. It is instinctively the nature that God put in every last one of his children to trust him, to believe him, to take his word for his face value, and to rely upon him and to adhere to him. I remember when we were working on the border of Myanmar and Thailand. Val was with us as well. And we got an invite at the end of the year to go in. Again, it was helping to rescue these kids out of brothels and all. And they said at the same time, if you'll be willing to go during the break between Christmas and the New Year, they open up the border on the, on the border between Myanmar and Thailand. And not only can you get in and be able to rescue some of these kids, but there's an army that's there that let us minister to them last year. So we said, okay, we'll be willing to go. We went in, we had a chance. We were actually working with the uh, DK, the, uh, the Democratic Karen Army for the Burmese. That's what we're working with, for Burma. So we first met with them, we're ministering to them. They were not so open, but they allowed us to preach a bit. But then the rebel leaders, which was the opposing army, pay attention to this. We met with them as well after meeting with the official army. 
When we met with the rebel leaders, these were some rebel leaders. I'm talking about bandanas, launch missiles, AK-47, hand grenades strapped all around them. But little did we know their commander-in-chief was an underground believer. So the commander says to me, would you be willing to come and preach the gospel to our, to the, in the barracks, to our team, you know, to the, to the military there? And I said, absolutely. We didn't know when we accepted that invitation that we would be going into undetonated landmines. So far back up in the jungle, we rode so far back up in the jungle, I said, are we there yet? I don't know if y'all had that movie over there, over here. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And we kept riding in deeper and deeper and deeper into the jungle. We rode so deep in the jungle, I said this. I said, this looked like some Rambo stuff. And the driver said, you don't know? This is where they filmed Rambo, Mesa, Thailand. Rambo filmed here. I looked up at God and I said, Father, you have a sense of humor, but you didn't let me know about this. <laughs> we're in undetonated landmines at night. So we go in the night, we're preaching to this, this whole barracks, and they all line up in formation. And they got AK-47s, they strapped with hand grenades, launch missiles, bandanas. I mean, they look like the Taliban. And I'm standing there in front of them preaching the gospel with such confidence. And I'm saying to them, I see you strapped with your weapons. And you, I know you believe, and the interpreter's, the commander's interpreting. And I said, but I came with weapons that's more powerful than your weapons. And they looked at me like, really? They kind of looked at me like, the porch light is on, but ain't nobody at home, okay? Gone. And I said, but the weapons of my warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I said, those of you that have been trusting in your weapons, what peace has these weapons brought you? What peace has your God brought you? And I began to tell them that my God was the God of peace. And I'm just up in front of them talking just as bold and just talking with confidence. And in my head, I'm thinking, they can pop your neck, little girl, because they top, you know, you know, they're martial art guys. And I'm just sitting there just proclaiming it. Just, and I'm saying, my weapons, my weapons are not carnal. And my weapons, I'm just really going, I mean, my God. Man. And in my mind, I'm going, God, if you ever thought about leaving me, this would not be the time to leave. And I said, your commander has accepted Jesus as his Lord. And how many of you are willing to put down and to step away from the God in whom you've trusted, who has brought you no peace, and the weapons that you've trusted that has brought you no results, and to embrace the weapons of my God, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I said, and if you are willing to do this, I want you as a step of faith and an act of your obedience towards to walk away from Islam and to walk away from Buddhism and Shintoism and animus, take a step forward like your commander has to accept Jesus. And as I said it in the night, I closed my eyes because I thought even if one moves, I will say, Father, thank you. And as I closed my eyes in the jungle, in the thick of the night, I heard, shh, shh. And that shh, shh was the entire military going shh, shh. The whole military accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So when I opened my eyes in the middle of the jungle, they were all standing there. And I began to realize none of this is based on who we are. None of this is based on what we've done. None of this is based on our works. It's all a sovereign God who believes more in us than we could ever believe in ourselves. We are no different than Gideon that needed the confidence of God. We're no different than Daniel in the lion's den that needed the confidence of God. We're no different than Moses that stands before Pharaoh that needs the confidence of God. Brethren, tonight in my eight minutes and 35 seconds, and those of you that are watching all over this continent and watching all over the United States and watching all over Europe, we need to understand tonight and make a vow to God tonight. Father, from this night, moving forward. I understand that by one man's disobedience sin entered the earth but I have not taken advantage of the other part of that act. The twofold part of that act is by one man's obedience righteousness has entered the earth and I've not been walking in the boldness and the righteousness as you've called me to for you said that the righteous are as bold as a lion. So therefore in the name of Jesus I will never be intimidated by bills. I will never be intimidated by fear. I'll never be intimidated by doubt and unbelief.
me. I'll never be intimidated about my future. I'll never be confused about my identity because I understand that everything that you predestined for me was not predicated upon what I've done. It's all your work that you've done for me. And so, Father, tonight I receive it. And, Father, tonight my faith is taken up to another level because I understand that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I understand tonight why faith and righteousness are married together. I understand tonight that it was Abraham's faith that was imputed for righteousness. In other words, Father, you're saying you just come back to the nature that you were originally designed for. The nature that we were originally designed for was a nature that believes their God, a, a nature that believes that they that know their God, they that are intimate with their God, they that are in right standing with their God, they shall do exploits. So, Father, I understand tonight, Father, that you've not, I've not been waiting on you. You've been waiting on me. So I come tonight and I want you to stand to your feet and we posture ourselves tonight and we let you know tonight and we let the nations of the earth know tonight that just as sure as this broadcast is going to air throughout the entire world and there is a revival coming that the word of God shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. You're making a people ready. You're raising up an army, an army of faith, an army of believers that understand that it's not based on how much I pray. It's not based on how much I fast. It's not based on everything that I've done, but it's based on what you predestined for my life before I was ever born. And I need you to understand tonight that the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross that was powerful enough to eradicate and to remit every sin that every human being would ever commit. And we don't have any problem embracing that. But in that very same blood is the power for us to live a life victorious. In that very same blood is the power to live debt free. In that very same blood is the power to break depression. In that very same blood is the future of my life. In that very same blood is the husband for that woman that's believing God. In that very same blood is the power to take the barren woman to have multiple children. In that very same blood is the power for my mind, my body, my spirit, my total being to be in union with Almighty God as if you had never sinned. It's the same blood. Somebody shout the same blood. Somebody shout the same blood. So we're no longer, Father God, going to embrace one part of your act and not take advantage of the other part. For we understand that not only was your sacrifice, the substitutionary sacrifice, the remitting of sin and cleansing us, but also in that act was the ability for us to live out a life in Christ Jesus and to be everything you predestined for us to be with no limitations. Somebody shout no limitations. And so tonight, I speak to every person that's viewing and I speak to the audience tonight as well. And I want to lead you into a confession tonight. And as we pray and as we release these prophetic words into the atmosphere, as I stood before that army in the middle of an undetonated landmine and as we went into Angola in a time of knowing that God had to be with us and, and going into the villages of Lloyd Tok Tok, it's the same confidence. The confidence is not in us, the confidence is in our God. I want you to embrace tonight in these last three minutes something that the Lord has done for you. That miraculous thing that you can easily go back to in your mind. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that only God could have done this for you. And the Bible says in Revelations 12, 11, that they overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I want you to embrace that tonight. That you know that God has done for you. And it's the same level of confidence that you can go back and say, God, I know you did it. And you just didn't do it. You did it for me. So as we go out tonight, it's that same type of confidence that you have in your treasure chest that God's already done this, and I know that he's done it. Because if he's done it before, he will do it again. So whatever you're facing tonight, whatever's before you, it's the same God. Because this God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it's that level 
of confidence and that position of righteousness that boosts our faith to another level, knowing this, that the same God that performed it before, he shall do it again. Can you say amen to that? Say this before your God tonight with the confidence that you've already seen him move. Father God, tonight I declare and I release prophetic words over my life, over my destiny, over my finances, over my family, over my health, over my children, over everything that concerns me. You promised me in your word that you would perfect it. So tonight, I make an intentional decision, a deliberate decision, that as of this day, my faith in you will have no limits because it's not predicated upon what I've done, but what you've done for me. So I embrace everything. I embrace everything that you've done for me, and I will live out the life. I will live out the life. I will live out the life that cost the Father God the blood of Jesus. Tonight, Almighty God, I'm ready. I'm ready. You don't sound ready tonight. You don't sound ready tonight. Say tonight, I'm ready. I am ready to walk in the fullness of the power of Almighty God. And no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. I'm gonna dream bigger. I'm gonna think higher. I refuse to be denied at the gate. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's my time. And I'm ready to live out my life in the fullness of Christ Jesus. Shout amen, somebody. And I decree over your life that the best is yet to come. Shout amen, somebody. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand for Dr. Patricia Bailey. Wow. Who got something out of that tonight? Come on. I am so glad I came to stand strong. I'm standing stronger now than ever before, Jen. Yes, you are. Because it's the Word of God alive on the inside of us. It's not by our power. It's not by our strength. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. And He's alive in every single one of His children. You know, we started Monday on a journey. Here we are, Friday night. Let's be honest. Every one of us has grown in our walk of faith. Come on. I trust you've grown at home as well. I trust you've understood what Stand Strong is all about. It's about the powerful Word of God to be released that you can stand the test of time. I want you to make this confession with me in closing tonight as we close down Stand Strong, as we get ready for Sunday and Monday night at 6 p.m. We're going to be back with you for Faith Connect. Let me tell you, you don't want to miss Monday. You want to be a part, but I want you to make one final declaration. And then it's all over for tonight. I want you on the airwaves, wherever you're watching, say, This day, I choose to stand on the Word of God. My strength comes from His Word. Every circumstance around me is nothing compared to the word that I'm standing on. I will not quit. I will not give up on my vision, on my dream, on my family, on my business, on my ministry. And Lord, I declare before all men, I will stand. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. We'll see you next week. God bless. Be constantly, he said, engaging in the contest of faith.
Your faith ought to be on something all the time. You are the number one candidate in the earth today that all of heaven is waiting for.